In a previous video, we explored working with persisted queries or persisted documents. We had a fake store here, which was a simple JavaScript map where this hash matched a query. Then on the server, we would only permit GraphQL operations where the hash matched inside of this JavaScript map. Managing these persisted queries yourself is quite time consuming, cumbersome, and is totally not recommended. I suggest that you look at using GraphQL code generator to enable this. If you've not worked with the GraphQL code generator client preset before, then I recommend that you check out the video where I have that shows you setting that up and working with it. This video carries on from what we set up there, where we have a configuration for our GraphQL code generator, where we generate a folder here called GQL using the preset client. We can pass some plugins and preset configuration to this generator function. If we open up our GQL folder here, we can see we have an index file that exports from our fragment masking and our GQL file. Instead of GQL, we have all of the different documents that we have inside of our application here, fully typed with type document node. Then inside of our application, all we need to do is invoke GraphQL, type the query, and this will automatically be typed for us using the GraphQL code generator and the type plugin. To run this, all we need to do is run GraphQL code gen. This will watch in the background for any changes to our query. So when we add new fields here, this will update the type for this document node. Now we can use the GraphQL client preset to also generate for us automatically using the code generator, the persisted documents or persisted queries. Since we're working with these type documents here, we'll stick to using the term persisted documents. If we now go back to the codegen.ts file for the GraphQL code generator, and we update the preset configuration to have a new key here, which is true for persisted documents. Once that's saved and we run the GraphQL code generator, this will check for any new changes to our queries and it will automatically generate for us a persisted documents JSON file. So here we can see similar to what we had before that we were manually creating, we have now a hash that results in a GraphQL query. If we open both the persisted documents and our client code, here if we make any changes to our GraphQL query, the code generator will automatically update the persisted documents, generating a new hash for that query and updating the resulting query. As you'd imagine, this doesn't just work with GraphQL queries, it works with any operation type. So here we have a new hash for the mutation add to cart, and then we have that query itself. So when the client is passing along a request to your GraphQL server, they will now pass this hash instead of passing the query. It's then the responsibility of the server to look up these hashes to get the query mutation subscription and execute that against your server. Hopefully this video has shown how you can get started with persisted documents without having to really do anything. All you need to do is continue working with your code, writing your GraphQL queries and mutations, and the GraphQL code generator will automatically create those persistent documents for you. In another video, we'll work with integrating what we see here with a GraphQL server, such as Yoga.